Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultimate Sims Guides. My name is Taylor and in today's video we are going to be discussing some of the gameplay features that you may have missed in The Sims 4. I wanted to make this just like a jumble of things that might make your gameplay more fun, things you may have never even heard of and don't know are in the game, or just some weird ones. Like the, the second one in this list is just weird that you would never really have a use for but is hilarious. So that's the only reason it's in here. So if you enjoyed this video at any point be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe. So let's just jump into the video. So the first thing is actually the ability to auto solve your needs. When you have a large family in The Sims 4, it can be a really big pain to get everybody to eat and shower and use the bathroom and just all of those things when you have to click and go upstairs and downstairs and all of that nonsense. So auto solving needs makes it so you can click on the little icon next to your Sims needs bar and they're just going to find a way to fix it. The only downfall is that they do always choose to nap when you click on the energy one. So that's one where you should just go click on their bed and tell them to sleep, but they'll go use the toilet. They'll go get themselves some food. Usually they'll get leftovers, but sometimes if there are no leftovers, they'll even just grab themselves a quick meal. You can get them to bathe. You can get them to talk to other people. There's just so much you can do with this auto solving and it makes it so that you don't have to click around and you can just get all of your Sims happy much, much much quicker. The next thing on this list is being able to set items as your sim's head. This one is pretty weird. Um, I'm not really sure where you would want to use this unless you just want some pretty funny screenshots to send to your friends. It's not going to make your gameplay easier, but it is going to get you some laughs. So all you need to do to use this is hold down shift and click on any item in the game and choose to set as head and then it will literally become your sim's head. So if you choose to do this with a couch, you'll have a couch head. If you choose to do this with a plate of food, you'll have a plate of food as your head. Um, it's very weird. I really don't know what you would use this for, but it can honestly be very hilarious. And I know that some people don't know it exists, so I decided to add it to the list. The next item on this list is that skill gains are boosted by your Sims emotions. So a big selling point in The Sims 4 is that there were these big emotion systems that were going to completely change the way that your Sims behaved. And to be honest, it didn't really do that, but they still have some value when it comes to skill building. If you're trying to gain a skill, there is an ideal mood that you want to be in. So for example, you don't want to be in a mood that is tense or uncomfortable or angry because your Sims won't actually want to work on the skill and they won't feel like doing it. The only time that you want to be angry, however, is if you're working on the mischief skill because, you know, it just makes sense. <laughs> It'll help your sims gain that skill quicker. So for example, if you are trying to gain the painting skill or the writing skill or any other kind of creative skill, feeling inspired is going to get you better results so your food or your painting or your book will come out higher quality and your sims are actually going to get a small skill boost gain in that. Another one you could use is feeling focused while trying to learn the logic skill. That also helps and it just kind of helps your sims, you know, get a move on, gets them focused in on the task and then they gain skills faster. And if you pair this kind of stuff with the skill gains that you can get if you live in a tiny home, if you have The Sims 4 Tiny Living, your Sims will gain skills so quickly that you'll feel like you're hardly even playing the game. It's kind of ridiculous. The next one on this list is the hidden grilled cheese aspiration. Now I have made an entire video on this, which I will have linked in the description down below, but there is a secret hidden aspiration where your Sims life will revolve completely around grilled cheese. <laughs> That's a thing that's in The Sims. I absolutely love how ridiculous this game can be from time to time. So to be able to unlock the grilled cheese aspiration, all you need to do is eat three plates of grilled cheese in a row. So not eat any other meal in between one grilled cheese, two grilled cheese, three, you can do it back to back, you know, just make sure that your Sims feel an extra stuffed with all that grilled cheese. And then you're going to get a notification in the top corner where it says that you have the option to switch to the grilled cheese aspiration. When you switch to this aspiration, you're going to do things like eating grilled cheese, of course, cooking grilled cheese, of course, talking to people about grilled cheese, but some of the things later in the aspiration in the final levels get a little bit crazy. So you're going to need to eat grilled cheese in space. So you literally bring a grilled cheese sandwich in your inventory onto a rocket and shoot yourself into space and eat it while you're there. And the other one that a lot of people have trouble with is you have to talk to the Grim Reaper about grilled cheese. So you have to either kill a Sim on purpose or be lucky enough to be in the room when a Sim dies of old age and then talk to the Grim Reaper about grilled cheese to finish off this aspiration. There are two things that you will unlock when you finish the aspiration. One of them is to be able to paint pictures of grilled cheese, which are beautiful, wonderful, and can decorate your home with all sorts of weirdness. And the second is that you'll be able to just summon grilled cheese at any moment. So your Sim could just be like, hanging out, be a little bit hungry, and you click on them, choose to get a grilled cheese, and you'll just have one appear in your hand. They won't be excellent quality, but they will get the job done. The next thing on this list is actually using the fitness stuff earbuds for fun management. Hear me out. I know that a lot of people think that the earbuds, like the pop-up that used to come up was really annoying. People would always say no to getting earbuds. However, 
These are so useful. <laughs> The key to making these useful is that you don't want to listen to. So if you click on the earbuds, you're going to have the option to listen to, and then you can choose a kind of music or just turn on. If you listen to, your sim's just going to sit there and like actively hang out and listen to the music. But if you turn them on, they're just going to be background noise that will increase your sim's fun as you do anything. So the way that I like to use this is if I have a sim going to university, while they're doing their homework, while they're working on papers, while they're working on their presentation, while they're just eating dinner, I have them always listening to music. Also the same with children. They can get home from school, you can have them listen to music, go get a snack, do their homework, and their fun's going up after they've had a hard day at school. These are especially valuable because they're only 100 simoleons per person. Each individual sim needs to have their own pair because they just stay in their inventory. They don't actually leave the inventory. If you have the fitness stuff pack, you can go to the order section on your computer and just order earbuds and you can get them in any color for your sim so that they feel a little bit more individual. But seriously, if you have the pack, do not sleep on these earbuds. They can change everything. The next thing is that food in The Sims 4 actually has like a calorie system. Now it's not like calories specifically. Different foods are going to make your Sims gain weight. So if your Sim has a entire diet of cake and hamburgers, they are obviously going to weigh a little bit more than a Sim who eats garden salads for every meal. I definitely see in Facebook groups for The Sims all the time, people being like, why did my Sim gain so much weight? If your Sim is eating while they aren't hungry, they're going to gain weight. And if they are eating a bunch of junky food and not working out, they're also going to gain weight. The best way to get your Sims to slim down a little bit is to just get them to run on a treadmill. However, who really cares if your Sims gain that much weight in The Sims? Like, we can all be a little bit chunky. It's fine. <laughs> The next thing is that you can actually silence your phone and change your phone's color. I know that the phone is kind of like default, like that blue greeny color. I honestly can't even picture it in my mind right now because I've just kind of like zoned out to its color, but you actually have the ability to change it to a bunch of different colors that are way cuter than the default, which I love. And you can also silence it. One of the most annoying things in the game is pop-ups. <laughs> if you have like parenthood and then you have phone calls and there's just all these pop-ups constantly coming up and just interrupting your gameplay all the time, it can make you go a little bit crazy. So if you silence your phone, your phone's still gonna like vibrate and like ring in the corner, but you won't actually hear the ring. You'll just be able to tell that it is ringing and then you can choose to answer it instead of it having just be a pop-up that you can't avoid. The next thing is that you actually do have the ability to teleport your Sims places in The Sims 4. Cause sometimes your Sims aren't able to move and there's like no real reason behind it. They just can't get out of a spot for whatever reason, the routing is weird whatever, or you have a toddler who hasn't yet gained the movement skill, but they need to get downstairs and you're just like, but you don't have a sim that can currently carry them, teleport. So what you need to do is you need to type in testing cheats true in your cheat dialog box, hit enter. If you hold down shift and click anywhere on the ground in your home or outside, you'll be able to just teleport here and your sims will just like be here and then they'll go poof and then they'll appear down there and it is beautiful. This is one of those things that I use all the time in the game and that I think every player needs to know about. The next one is lot traits, which I know that a lot of people do know about, but I don't think that people realize how powerful lot traits can be. I know that a lot of simmers won't even add lot traits to their houses because it's just like one of those things, you know, it's in the build mode menu. It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, but they can be so helpful. <laughs> These were added to the game around the time of city living and they are awesome. There's things like on lay line, which means that your sims have a higher chance of getting twins or triplets, if that's something you're interested in. If you're living off campus for university, you can choose to make it a study spot, making it easier for your sims to study. If your sims are painters, you can have a home studio, you can have a chef's kitchen. You, there's so many things that you can use to make your gameplay easier, to gain skills faster, to make the quality of items better. And there are some where you can have negative things, like your house could be cursed, or there could be gremlins that break things and you wake up and everything in your house is broken every morning. Like it just kind of adds an extra aspect to the gameplay. And all you need to do is just pick a couple or you can just even just choose one, but it just, it just shakes things up. Cause you know, we always need to shake things up in the game and kind of have the game guide how we do things. The next one is the ability to get rid of intense emotions by doing specific actions. So sometimes your Sims will get really sad or like, especially teenagers, they'll come home enraged. They'll come home mortified. And these things can actually lead to death in The Sims 4. These extreme emotions, you can die from being hysterical, you can die from being mortified, and you can die from being enraged. So you want to make sure that you do some things to kind of get rid of those. We don't need death. 
Unwanted death is the worst in The Sims, but sometimes it can be really fun to kill Sims. Let's say that your Sim is very sad for whatever reason. Maybe one of their family members died or maybe they're just having a bad day. You actually have the option to go in bed and cry or go in a mirror and give yourself a pep talk. I'm sure there's other things that I just can't think of off the top of my head, but doing these will actually take time off the amount of time that your Sim is going to be feeling that emotion. So you can do these back to back to back if you just wanna get rid of it completely or if you just wanna change the duration of it, you can just do it a couple times. Or for example, if your sim is feeling angry, they can take an angry poop, which is one of my favorites. <laughs> Child age sims also have the option to just go like beat up Blarfy and like that's a thing they can do. So all of these are going to help get rid of those emotions and make sure they don't get to the hysterical, mortified, or enraged stage where your sims will die. And the final thing on this list is that if you have The Sims 4 Seasons, you can create your own holidays. I know that a lot of players love the holidays in the game, but they wish they had some that kind of reflected their own like religious holidays or just things that their family celebrate. But you can go into the settings in your calendar and you can create your own holidays on any day that doesn't already have one. And you can also delete any of the existing ones. So if you don't like the gnomes on Harvest Fest, get rid of them. If you don't like Father Winter for whatever reason, get rid of them. You can create things like Easter, or Halloween because there is an option to dress up in costumes and you can even create something like a more patriotic holiday if you're in the states you could do the 4th of July if that's something you celebrate or in Canada we could do Canada Day and have that something be in the game and I think that that can really add a little bit of realism and kind of make it more fun I don't know you can choose different things like on if you made a 4th of July holiday a lot of people like to go swimming and do water activities and that's an option for one of the things your sims will do so it could be like eat drink and water activities and have that be your 4th of July holiday. Or you could have Easter and have the flower bunny come and give you seeds. <laughs> the flower bunny is one of my favorite people in the game and it really bums me out that they didn't create a holiday with the flower bunny in it. And I know that a lot of you might not even know who the flower bunny is. So if you have The Sims 4 Seasons, go in, create some kind of holiday in the spring and definitely have the flower bunny come visit. But yeah, guys, those are my 11 things in The Sims 4 that you might not know exist. You may know they exist, but not know how powerful they can be. Like those earbuds, they are incredible. I swear, use them all the time. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I also make some gameplay videos like the 100 Baby Challenge on this channel. We also do a ton of other stuff. So if that's the kind of stuff you're into, be sure to subscribe. I really hope you're having an awesome day and I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.